My name is Martha Mendizable, and I'm an ExArts Fellow here at ASU. I'm based out of California Center, and Pachuco XR is my ExArts project. It's one of four, and we worked with community members from um, Boyle Heights, East LA, South LA. We've worked with the community for over five years, and when presented with this opportunity for the fellowship, um, we knew that we had to go into the local community and support grassroots work um, as I do through my nonprofit, and that's how Pachuco itself started. We worked with local artists, generational artists, youth as a collective effort focused on bringing together culturally relevant uh, stories through the art lens and through the power of emerging technology. So when I first had the idea seated in my mind as to Techno Latinx, I would say I was thinking more because of my startup experience, uh, a venture backed company. Um, but I quickly found that the audience, the community, the culture I really wanted to have embedded in my um, company at the time really took and leaned into more of a nonprofit, community driven organization. And it translated into what then it became, which was Techno Latinx and XR Lab. The main goal is to bring XR, emerging technology, to communities that otherwise wouldn't have access. Uh, when we started, the equipment was extremely expensive. It still is, but it's more affordable now. And so we bring technology to the communities. We teach the skills and we start with art. And art is the fluency that leads to technology exploration and creativity. And what we have done in our practice is we hire students. We pay the students to learn. When they learn, they make a commitment. And in that commitment is to go back into the communities with us, their communities, to teach and um, transfer knowledge, XR knowledge. I first started working with them in 2019 for a project about immigrant mothers. And from there, you know, just sort of um, got along really well with Martha and Nadia and really believed in their mission. I wanted to do more digital things. I wanted to like, I don't know, make these grand spaces that can fit within a screen or can fit within a headset. And so to have the opportunity with Techno Latinx was definitely a godsend. Our nonprofit Techno Latinx is a fiscally sponsored project of MALDEV, which stands for the Mexican American Legal Defense and Educational Fund. And that's an organization that leads civil rights uh, for the Latino community in the nation. So standing on the foundation of law and pursuit of social justice and economic justice, we thought, well, how do we do this in an interesting way, in a fun way? And because we work with other nonprofits, um, one of the main ones is self-help graphics. And that was where Techno Latinx launched its first uh, community-facing workshops, um, specifically through their summer youth programs. And there, during that time, we got to meet the family Coronados, the paper mache um, artist. And it was the first time I, I got to see the workmanship in person, the dedication, the beauty, the handcraft nature of putting together such a beautiful sculpture um, that really was generational knowledge coming together. This is their life legacy, like in terms of work, in artistic work at least. Um, we, we brought them to the facilities, we gave them a tour, we showed them the technology, we worked with her, with their daughter who, who's an artist and, and there's a, a younger um, girl, her name is um, uh, Regina, Regina. And she was a, an international student at that point um, in an exchange program here for six months. She was, she's 16 and she's so excited. And so she was like really the energy that pulled them because she was learning new technology, because she was learning all these new things. So it was through the eyes of young curiosity that it opened the doors to the family saying, you know, I think this is something really cool. The Chuco XR is really the exploration of the Suit Suit Riots which is a very important um, American history event. And it's really centering on civil rights. And in California, it has to do too with the um, desegregation of schools where Mexican Americans were allowed to attend better schools. Um, and it all starts in the 1940s. And so at the time, newspapers were the technology of the era, right, to transmit information and, and news. And so all of the newspapers' um, coverage of Suit Suit and of Suit Suit Riots and of um, people of color tended to be negative. Being at the Herald Examiner, we just thought, you know, 
the pachinko needs to be here because this is like reclaiming the space and it's such a beautifully renovated space and, and it's of the era. And in this case, we were able to say, we're in a different era and we're celebrating and we're also using new technology to be able to um, disseminate a new, new uh, narrative. I thought it was really important to sort of bring this history to um, a wider population using a new form of technology to make it sort of more accessible to the people who um, are most impacted by this kind of history and who might be uh, the most interested to, to hear about it. In the experience, you could see the newspapers, the research. So it's part education, part entertainment, part interaction and a social event. So it's multiplayer where um, people can see the other participants inside of the gallery. And a lot of times with VR, there's this notion of it's isolating. Um, but in the case of the Pachuco Gallery, we were able to um, have the interactivity that um, people see that there's others there. And so we had artists that 3D sculpted, we had artists that um, created and then scanned, others did 2D art. And what I heard a lot actually of feedback is, this is awesome, like I want my kids to try it, when are you showing it again? Like a lot of interest in that sense. It's a craft, it's storytelling, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not just telling stories, it's not just using technology is not it's it's all of these things coming together that could create a powerful movement and then the pride that it was just 90 percent of the people making the experience artists techies um bipoc and so that's very unusual and so that's what i tell my team um, we're not creating xr content for latinos we're latinos creating xr content you know, even though the name Techno Latinx puts Latinx in front, uh, Latinos, it really is um, beyond that. And so to me, it's, it's the beauty of so many different backgrounds coming together. Pachuco XR in itself had such a diversity uh, like backing that to me, it's also so important that we get to tell these stories and have so many different people from different walks of life, different age groups, different cultures, different backgrounds come together. What moves me is thinking about my roots and wanting to, to really understand that for myself and to find a sense of preserving my stories, I think also drives why, um, why Pachuco XR, why combining the old traditions, these old stories that are family stories with these emerging technologies. It's really about legacy preservation in an innovative way. What we have here is like a combination of like history and the future, uh, because I do believe that XR is the future. So like having this sort of futuristic thing, explore the past, I think is like basically what, like our whole intention is. To me, when I saw them put him together and then have to take him apart to store him, it, it was as if I was seeing my ancestors be put in a closet, be put in a dark room. And to me, it's something that I just, as part of my Techno Latinx legacy, is something that I would love to be part of uh, finding Pachuco, finding that type of art and story a home, finding him a home in different community spaces, in museums, um, in places like ASU, where we get to share the story through the immersive experiences. And so that's, that's where I see this going, is continuing to provide and share our stories provide the education and have um, a nice cultural exchange. Having ASU support through Martha's fellowship has been really cool to see the impact of that because just comparing this to the previous projects that I worked with them on, this is way larger scale. The fellowship for me as an individual uh, has advanced my practice, my cultural practice, my nonprofit practice, um, just furthered my, um, my goal of bringing emerging technology into the community. It's just a dream, I mean, to be able to be at the forefront of where change is happening and being in the room and sort of getting stuck with something or having a, a technology hang up. And, and I know that I could go to the right person. So it's not just resources, it's, it's obviously the financial resources are a huge help. Uh, being able to use the lab, we have all these students that usually we train two or three at a time, all of a sudden we could have 10. We're learning there with them. We're all raising the bar together. But a lot of the times, if one doesn't know, like, wait, where is this going? Why are we doing this? Why am I having to stretch so much? Um, 
And this is hard. This is something I've never done before. But when you have an institution, a powerful institution saying, you know what, we like what you're doing. We want to back you. We want to support you um, by giving you, you know, access to our space, access to our amazing technology, to our tech mentors that are here in the space too, and having the youth interact. It's, it creates uh, not just a sense of community and belonging, but it drives them further because now their why is, okay, I'm not just, we're not just gonna produce this, this amazing story, but it, this is where it's gonna go. So I think it's uh, not just support in the space and the hardware, it's support in that, that drive. I am really looking forward to like the big, uh, like the big release because now that I've seen like the scope of what can be done, I want to do more. You know, like I want to add more. I want to put as much potential into it as I can. Like seeing it in, in an actual physical space with people actually enjoying it, it makes me want to like add more. It makes me want to make it crazy or bolder. Let's put our all into it. Like I, I want to work more on it. We have all of the ingredients to finish the experience where we don't need internet. And that's a big thing because when going to um, high schools or like uh, rural environments, internet may not be fully reliable. So we want to create an experience that doesn't need to connect to the internet, but also has learning materials. So that's one aspect. But the other aspect is we want to create a documentary as to how this happened, because there's a lot of activism that is nascent in the community. And when it comes around tech, it's very nebulous, especially emerging technology. And so to be able to show, look, these are your peers. This is how it happened. This is how we did it. It's super important. But it's also to elevate like the, a program like ASU um, XArts Fellowship because there needs to be more. There's a way to amplify the reach and and for Techno Latinx is also a way to disseminate the work that we do in a way that is understood. For students from under-resourced communities, um, stepping into a space like this with technology it's just something that is not really common. And so this program in the community that I work with, it has seeded something and it will flower because we have students that otherwise could have, we couldn't have trained. I mean, we just didn't have the equipment. And so this program is really, I think, reaching the local community as perhaps was intended, yeah.